This is Brother Peter with tidbits <clears throat> from the Word. While I'm right here, folks, in chapter 17 of the book of John, this is a chapter where they're going to, Judas is going to come, betray Jesus, and the, the, he's going to go through a great tribulation, great trial. But in chapter 17, we just read, and I just spoke on uh, about 40 minutes, on about what Jesus said. And what he said, he said, I have, I have, I have, I have, I have. I have committed, I have done, I have finished, I have done all this. You know what? This was prior to the cross. And he already received the fact that he had done it and that it was finished and that was it. And he was going to rest in the Father no matter what took place down the road, you may be on a train that is wrecked and all the cars are mangled up and you're climbing down through a bunch of people and you're still alive. And you say, why did this happen to me? That would be like Jesus asking, why is this happening to me? Know this for a fact. Whatever happens to you is for the good. Whatever happens to you is either for a lesson for you to learn or for you to have the opportunity to reach that one or touch that one that you would that day. This morning, pumping gas, I reached around the pump. Young lady, baby in the back, going to work perhaps real early. And I said to her uh, something, and I gave her a try. I said, I go to Faith Baptist Church on Hammond Road in LaGrange. And I'd like to give you a track. Tells you how to go to heaven. And it's going to be a good day, isn't it? She said, well, I hope it is or something. And that was the end of that little conversation. She was in the car gone. I was in my truck gone. Now, Jesus had me there for that time. Had her there for that time. And you say, well, what's going to become of that? I don't know. The track's got the plan of salvation in it says, if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and will believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now let's see some things that happened to Jesus on the road after he had already committed his life, his self, and everything to God he committed. He put it all in the hands of the Lord. And he said, I, I speak openly to the world. I, even though in the synagogue and in the temple, were with the Jews always, resorting and secret, have I said nothing. Why also, uh, why askest thou me uh, uh, these hard things? What I have said unto them, behold, they know what I said. These people came and tried to trick a man of God, the man God himself. <coughs> and they didn't realize they were speaking. Jesus said in 23, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of that evil. But if well, why smitest thou? Why smitest thou me? They were smiting him on the face. They were pulling his beard. They were spitting on him. And they were doing things to him. By the way, we're living in a world today. Hates the cross of Jesus Christ. Hates the cause of Jesus Christ. Hates the people of Jesus Christ. The Bible said, except God draw a man, he cannot come to the Father. So I pray as you'd be. That one that hates you most, God, draw him to you. Draw him to you. Ten times Jesus was led by others. We're going to look at those for a minute. Uh, he was led up by the Holy Spirit for 40 days in the wilderness and fasted for 40 days. He was led up by the Spirit of God to go and to... Uh, deny his self. Deny his flesh. We're not willing 
and even me sitting here this morning, I have not been willing, in a big sense of the word, to completely deny my flesh and give it all to the Lord Jesus Christ that I would not be in the way. I have been in the way. And I've had some attacks of late. Some attacks from the devil to try to kill me of late. And then some attacks on the fleshly body of late. But God said, pass through that. Pass by that, Brother Peter. <laughs> that is a, a, a growing time. It's a testing time. Are you going to follow me? Or are you going to follow the flesh and the whims of the devil? By the way, the devil is not but nothing but a shadow. Have you ever seen the shadow of a gun kill somebody? Have you ever seen the shadow of a gun shoot somebody? Have you ever seen the shadow of an arrow stab somebody? Listen, a shadow brings on fear, and fear will bring on non-truth. It's not true. You can stand in the forest and think you see a tree move. The more you dwell on it, the more it moves. And it ain't moved a lick yet. It's you having a problem up here. It's called fear. By the Holy Spirit he was led. By the Holy Spirit to the defeat of Satan. The Lord showed him the defeat of Satan. Remember after 40 days he fasted, he was hungry. He come down and Satan said, Hey, if you're the one you say you are, turn these stones into bread and eat something. You're about to starve to death. Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. And he was read by, led by the mob. Uh, uh, Ananias led him. The mob led him. And then uh, after he was led by the, the mob uh, <clears throat> to, to Caiaphas, and he was brought before him, and he was condemned <clears throat> there by another mob, and by the Jews that carried him to Pilate. And the Jews said, let this blood be upon us. And then the most horrific statement I ever heard in my whole life. They said, and on our children. And on our children's children. Do you know what? It has been on them. And has been on their children. And has been on their children's children. If you're a Jew and you're listening to me today, you need to become a Messianic Jew. You need to start believing in the Jesus that was crucified on the cross. You need to get over the hump. I would suggest you get back in Genesis, and I would suggest that you read from Genesis to Malachi, and then open the New Testament and deny that Jesus was who he was. You can't do it. If you really believe the Old Testament that you know, by heart, most of you Jewish people know it by heart. If you really believe it, you cannot deny Jesus was the Messiah. What kills me is that here's a woman at the well, Samaria, a Samaritan woman. Jesus said, I must go over there. I got a, I got a prophetess over there. I got a woman over there that believes in me. She's praying to me. She's talking about me. She's seeking me. She's wanting to meet me. She's wanting to see me. People say, well, she's had five husbands. That didn't make any difference. Her heart already knew Jesus. And because she did, he went over there and he met with her. And he'll meet with you. If you're a Jew and you want to know him, all you got to do is say so. He'll be inside of you within a split second and you'll know it. You'll be a Messianic Jew. Then you can reach your other brothers and sisters with what you learn and what you know. My advice to you, get you a date Bible. Get you a good Bible and get in it. I have the Jewish Bible. I read the Jewish Bible. But I also read the King James Version. I also get in the New Testament. And I also believe that the Old Testament told me what the New Testament would say and by reading the New Testament, I find the Old Testament to be 100% true. No falsehoods in it. No mess-ups in it. No places of discrepancy. 100% it's 